Uh, okay, so here we have the path for BGM6. Now this one, I think, was pretty balanced in uh, notes and path. So this one has a lot of activations, and this is also the song that has the most tilt activations for me. You see, most of the song is just straight up 16th strumming, with very few breaks. Uh, and there's a few awkward activations in it as a result of that. Uh, but yeah, we'll start off with the first activation. It's a good place to start, and it's pretty simple, compared to the rest anywhere. So yeah, two phrases, no whammy, and all we're doing is looking for this... It's a green red trill, but they're in grace notes. And we're activating halfway through that. The actual activation says to squeeze in this red note uh, instead of activating on the green, but it's a bit unnecessary. This song really isn't close, not most of the time, unless you get double FC, which is really rare. So, yeah, just activating on this green note. Instead, probably ending uh, a note shy here. It's getting a squeeze instead, because you can see it's really not much uh, difference in note length, I guess. No gap between these notes, should I say. Uh, so yeah, activating on this green note. Didn't strum it, but uh, just felt comfortable pressing the button at the same time as the green note was hit. Uh, so yeah, first activation, not bad. Second activation, it's also pretty okay. We have this long whammy phrase here, which is all easy because it's all taps and all the sustains are really long, so that's nice. And people, I guess, will be tempted to activate as soon as these 16s came up, or on these quads, or something like that. But there's too many breaks for this to be really worth that much. You can see it's like an entire measure break right here, or another measure break right here. So the actual activation is, we wait until we see this uh, descending trip, then an entire measure to prepare for it, and activate on the next note. And the way this one pans out, if my mouse would like to work, <coughs> Excuse me. The way this one pans out, we overlap this phrase right here, which isn't a problem if we get like any whammy at all. Well, we need enough whammy because it's a uh, it's an entire measure extra, but there is no problem overlapping this. It overlaps, and we end on this note or this note, but we end just as the uh, notes slow down to triplets here. So it's like a perfect activation. We're getting all sixteens, and it ends when it. Uh, comes to 8th triplets. Okay, so nice, pretty easy activation. And then we get into the tilting, so the good thing is there's no whammy in the middle of all this uh, strumming, so that's uh, fine. And because it's all 16ths, it generally doesn't matter too much if you activate late or whatever, it's just a case of not getting a squeeze. But anyway, this next activation, two phrases, and it's an, an immediate act, so we, I was just looking waiting for this second phrase to come up and then I would start tilting and it would activate straight away. Not much to say there, we're just tilting as soon as the phrase comes up. Next activation, another two, no whammy. And what we're looking for here, it says to activate on this yellow, I opted for this measure green here because getting this squeeze is, uh, is not going to happen really. And the way I was tilting it would probably activate a bit earlier than the green anyway. Uh, but yeah, the way to remember this is it's the last cycle of this first chorus bit, I guess you could say. So you can see the chorus starts here, measure 94. Right, and this is the next one. You can see it's just stacked on top of each other. Cycle 1, cycle 2, cycle 3, cycle 4 of the first chorus. So yeah, we're aiming at a tilt right here. Next phrase. We get two whammy phrases. Pretty simple whammy phrases. I guess you could maybe miss this orange wall bit. That's what I was always worried about, just because it's a phrase. You feel more pressure, but never ended up going that way. I did miss this phrase though, but less said about that the better. <laughs> but yeah, uh, easy whammies, easy whammy. Sort of fast transition from whamming hitting this note here, but you do have half a measure, so it's not all bad. Either way, you're activating on the first note of the strumming again. So yeah, three tap notes. Boosh. Very easy to remember. No overlaps or anything. Uh, and that's all that can be said about that. Next phrase, once again, we get two phrases with no whammy. And this is relatively uh, soon after the second phrase, so it's not too bad to remember. But what we're looking for here is halfway through the last cycle this time, is where we're activating, so 
why we would activate here previously so if we go up we can see the chorus starts here first cycle second cycle third cycle fourth cycle and 149 is halfway through and this is pretty much where it tells us to activate this time rather than being lit uh, so yeah, halfway through this last cycle and this is a very valuable activation because we have a lot of these chords well we have the same amount of chords but we also have triplets which are worth pretty much as much and then this trill which is probably worth more so this is I guess the most valuable activation in the whole song and also like the hardest note part of the whole song which is uh, annoying but yeah it's still worth activating here because <coughs> if you do hit it and you don't activate over it and instead wait to get some more 16s or something I mean this part is as awkward so definitely best to activate here uh, and yeah and then we actually only have one more activation we have some whammy in the solo here fairly awkward phrase here but yeah whammy and it says to activate right here but that creates a very tight overlap I found I couldn't get this overlap if I activated here and because it's the last phrase of the song you don't really want to be ending up with like half bar as the song ends even though this activation isn't worth that much it's probably like the least valuable activation in this song but yeah it's still worth overlapping here so I think I delayed it not even to here I think I literally delayed it to the measure 176 just to make sure and so we're getting a lot of slower notes but as I say it didn't normally come down like to like even a few thousand at least if you're seeing you normally won this song so yeah in fact I think that's the case uh, only me and Chris have seen this song in the tournament and every time that happened we'd won the match so yeah we're considering we didn't play against each other uh, in the pool 2 you'd hope so <laughs> But yeah, I activated here, safely got the overlap. Uh, got some of this lesser stuff that's worth less. But at the end of the day, the score I was getting, you see optimal 684, I was normally getting about 680. So about 4,000 off optimal on a song that's worth like almost 700,000 points and has this many notes and this many activations. It's pretty good. So if I was FC in this, I was set basically. And yeah, that's the path for BGM6. Uh, we'll move on now to the note of it. Okay, so here we are with uh, BGM6. I'm going to take a look at the note of BGM6. This one, I think a lot of people hated for one reason or another. Another, For me personally, the reason I didn't like the chart as much as it could have been is because of these uh, green-red chord taps that are really awkward to do without overstrumming. Um, so I'll be going over them as long, along with uh, a bunch of other things. Uh, for some people, strum stamina was a problem. For me, that was okay. But um, we'll just look at it bit by bit. Intro. Immediately, it starts off pretty quick. And I missed, happened to miss the first note. I don't know how. But no. <laughs> so I opted to just one hand this bit. And I guess the reason for that is because uh, we have an activation in this section. And we also have a transition in the said chords right here. And I guess I'll get the chords out of the way right now. The way this, they happen so many times throughout the song, it's like 20 times. I don't know if that's an exact number, but they could be like 20, 25 times if you include the times they happen like twice in a row instead of four times in a row. So, yeah, I'll just go straight to them. This part is just sliding down and one handing, there's not really anything to say. And then a trill here. Okay. So, I use the first tap as a hammer-on, and then alt strum through the rest. Still doing it in gallops, but not reset strumming, because reset strumming will definitely give you an opportunity to uh, have Explorer Backlash or just some, an inadvertent overstrum. And there is no instance in this song where I do not use the first tap, because you never know how Clone Hero is going to screw you. So yeah, and that's how I deal with every single one. There is no circumstance in which I do not use that. Always ends on a downstream on the last one. So that's the chords out of the way. These trills, they are just trills. There is a kind of awkward transition from this trill up here. But uh, it's not too bad. 
And if you really wanted to, actually that's just after an activation, so you probably wouldn't be able to tap that unless you did the tilt act. So yeah, it goes green, red, orange, blue. Of course, you could always just go to the slide up like that. But it's not too fast to be that much of a problem. So that's the intro covered. Next thing to talk about, I'll just take a quick look at these like orange and blue walls here. So I opted to one hand them, just because there's a double, a double green you have to strum. That would be kind of awkward to use the tap nuts there or do teleportation. Not consistent enough. So annoyingly enough, I, it's, it's not not that long of an orange wall, so it's not that bad. And the blue wall is fine because you can just stay in second position and there's no pink involved. It's almost just a red blue trill. So that's uh, that bit that happens a couple of times. Not that much of an issue, really. Post chorus. This has a, a, a the quads in it. Slow enough to one hand, I find. You slide into the first one. And then anchor green for that little uh, blue green at the end. Okay. Now, as far as the verses go, and pretty much the majority of the song, it's just 16 strumming. So from here, you just 16 strumming for a while, in doublets, and it's basically all in doublets. Now, I don't think there's anyone that would be burst strumming in... I mean, you could do that, but this will wear your stamina out a lot quicker. There's no way you'd be able to keep that up through the whole song unless you were, I don't know, Muck or someone. But, yeah, there's not, nothing can be said here, really. One thing I used to do, and I still kind of do, I try and hook my the inside of my elbow around the corner of the XP, and that somehow gets me, uh, like, makes me be able to tense more and gives me more stamina for some reason, so. There's stuff like that, I could probably do it. I mean, the, I think the reason I'm missing here is because of the, the node speed being like 15. But yeah, doing that gives me, like, I don't know, it's not vibrate strumming, but it sort of gives you unlimited stamina. Unlimited stamina, but yeah. Other than that, there's open notes in between, but the open notes aren't really much of a problem. And you do get these occasional breaks, like these triplets here. So, yeah, if, and one, one of the best things I ever heard about getting stamina is something that Alf said. He said, um, so it was like an Existo Vulgar or something on Rockman. It was like, listen, if you're doing, if you can't do it, just force yourself through it a few times and then you'll be able to do it. And it's amazing how true that is. Like, if you if you feel like you can't get strong stamina, then all you need to do is just keep doing it. You might not be able to do Pills of Mercy, but like, I went from being a poor strummer, in my opinion, I was like, I had no strum stamina, to being able to do like everything. So. <laughs> Like rebirth was no problem now, and I've done like Nevermore 110. So I'm, I know, and I won't consider myself a good strummer. And that just due, just due to that tip, of, you know, if you feel like you can't strum for that long, just keep doing it, and you will be able to do it. <laughs> and it's stupid how it works, and it does work seriously. If you don't believe me, try it. But um, yeah, so that's how you could possibly gain summon for this song. But this song is kind of like. 15 NPS or 14 NPS, so it's not that fast, it's more just how long it goes on for, rather than the speed of the strumming. So yeah, there's nothing really to comment on. These alt chorus bits have the uh, chords at the end, you could hear it there. So, I'll just show how that works, because last time, it was from taps into the chords. So what I'm doing there is, I'm literally, after the last doublet, just dropping a note and then doing, I guess, another doublet in the chords. Every time. Never strum the first one, because you'll overstrum. 
And even if you think you do it at the exact right time, Clone Hero will find a way. Now, there is something to say here where it just randomly slows down and speeds up, so... It's worth remembering that the tempo changes back to normal after that one short strumming bit. So that's just a little thing as well. Okay. The hardest part of the song. And what I'm going to do... Uh, the solo is nothing, by the way. But this breakdown section is definitely the hardest part. Right, I'm just going to include this as well, because the chords are sort of part of it. Right, so we'll talk about that bit first in the transition. One hand these triplets I do, so you're basically hitting in the zigs. They're not that fast, and considering you're transitioning from strumming these chords, it sort of um, just makes it more consistent rather than having to rely on teleporting. So yeah, it is possible to do, but I just prefer to one hand them and then get my hand prepared for the trill. Okay, so... And strum the first note of it. Just makes it easier. Then we have the trill itself. So how many reds are in this trill? I've never actually counted. So there you go. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11. So there's 11. So yeah, instead of tapping 11, definitely tap 12. And that is a necessary teleport. I mean, I guess because it's 11, you could probably one-hand it. If you were Jarvis or someone else, but not me. See, originally I thought that was 13, but it's 11, so 12 is enough. And then, as far as teleporting goes, you just gotta teleport. And it's a pinky slide up to the orange after that, so that's kind of awkward as well, so you're doing a trill. More natural rhythm, 12 taps. It's basically making it a 16th note trill. Then straight into and the reason it's easier to end on 12 than 11 is because the last tap is going to be with your fretting hand so you can have that one note buffer as opposed to boom and the next note is already a strong okay so we'll do that once more and then we'll move on to the breakdown B I guess Okay, we have this mess. And it's the same every time. The only thing that changes is the trans transition into it, but it's, you know, it's the same thing. So, the way I do this, first one, as normal, we use the use the first one as a tap, then strum twice, and I'll slow this down actually so I can do this while I'm thinking about it. So, so I actually I do two strums, then use this green. Use this strum because you're already holding down green red, so you can't hold the strum. So I guess the key here is use the first tap note of the green red chords as usual except for that bit but that's kind of obvious and use the green tap at the bottom of the trips a little bit faster how that goes. And 
And I guess it would be worth saying that I think I do actually resets from these ones. At least the ones that start on a down. And there's another potential pinky slide into the solo, but it doesn't have to be that way if you remember that the first note of the solo is an orange. So now I'm going to do the first, the whole breakdown now. As far as the solo goes, ironically enough, it's the easiest part of the song, pretty much. It's just basic taps and there really isn't anything to say about it. Besides maybe solo A, where it has this bit where you want to strum red taps. But obviously if you just do that, strum two reds per like note at the top, you'll be fine. And then the song ends. The song ends with these triplets that it's probably... <laughs> kinda you can forget that they're there and I have done that once I think it was on a practice run I, I missed I got rid of an FC on these notes but yeah probably strum the first note of them and then just three one hands you'll be fine so that's BGM 6 and we'll do a run of it
Okay, so that was a BGM6, 680k as I was saying, uh, the usual for an FC. Some weak whammies here, some strong whammies there, but that's just how it goes. Anyway, uh, next song is Dad's.